Well, today, pretty much in alignment with the meditation of seeing ourselves the way we want to see ourselves, I thought the topic today would be beyond appearances. I think we get so hung up in this idea of appearances that we forget that we have all this opportunity to be different, to be more, to be all these other things. And all we've got to do is see beyond. You see, most of the time, people discuss what they do not want rather than what they do want. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed when someone comes up to you, they'll be talking about, oh, the weather's just awful. It's too cold. The weather's too hot. They're not talking about, oh, with this weather, I can wear my cold jacket and I'll be toasty warm in it, and I'll be able to have a fire in the fireplace. They're not talking about what they want. They're talking about what they don't want. I don't want this in my life. I don't want that. And what are they doing? They're attracting what they don't want. We have been programmed to complain. We've been programmed to gossip. In fact, almost 95% of what we talk about is complaining and gossiping. So when you really think about that, you wonder why people's lives are, are demonstrating the way they are. It's really simple. What they see as their life, the appearance of their life demonstrating is the result of their inner awareness, their inner consciousness. I believe it's time to remind ourselves that we're not dealing with a creative process where we get something for nothing or we experience an outer condition that is entirely different from our inner state of consciousness. No, that's not what's happening. We're not dealing with a creative process that's outside of us. We're dealing with a creative process that's in us that gives us who we are. And the work, the work that we have to do is building that image of who we are, that belief of who we are, living it, breathing it every moment of the day. That's work. It's work to build a belief about you. You've got to align all your thoughts, your words, your actions and feelings. You've got to align them toward a specific intended desired outcome. You've got to hold that view and you've got to do it both consciously and unconsciously, persistently and consistently. And when you've done it enough and it becomes the nature your inner nature, your inner being, you will demonstrate that which you use the creative process for. But if you're not going to demonstrate that, it's not going to happen. You see, conditions or experiences are the result of unseen causes and the action of the law. We like to think, well, that happened because I saw the cause. We don't understand the cause is in our mind or the cause is in someone else's mind. So if someone else is having a not desired experience, you can't change it. Only they can when they change the cause, which is within their own mind. So you may be in a relationship right now and you would like to change your partner's experience. You may have children. You want to change your children's experiences. You may have parents. You want to change their experiences. But guess what? You can be caring and you can support them, but you cannot change their experience because they must change. That's one of my favorite things. I love the saying. It's on one of the agape bracelets that we pass out to people. And that is, nothing changes until you change. Really contemplate that. Nothing changes until you change. And guess what? The change you're doing is beneath the appearance. It is beyond the appearance. The appearance is just there to let us know, have we made the change? Because until we make the change, the appearance doesn't change at all. It just goes on the way it is. 
You see, there's a lot of people will come to me and say, Reverend Lee, are these conditions real? Is this all an illusion? And based on the fact that we're human beings with a body, with feelings, with emotions, with a mind that interpret things, the conditions and experiences that we experience are real and tangible. And we do not deny their reality. We accept them for what they are, but we don't stop there. You see, we see if we have an illness, we accept, I have an illness. We see if my relationship is not working out, I'm not in a relationship that's working. If we do not have money in our bank accounts, we accept and see. The tangible evidence is there is no money in my bank account. But we know and understand that our thought is this unseen spiritual cause that is behind every effect. Our conditions will change when our thoughts change. And you see what a great gift that is. Think about that. I'd rather have it that way. Why? I can change my thoughts. I have the power to change. I am not reliant on anything outside of myself and neither are you and neither is anyone else. When people are ready to embrace this power, oh my God, it's such a blessing for them. Think about this. What is the greatest thing we discovered? The greatest thing we discovered is that we can think. And when we realize that we can think, we start to understand, oh wait, thoughts create. This makes us different than anything else in humanity. We are creators. We are one with the infinite. We are using the same creative power that it uses. You see, life is always working for us. And when we work with it, it works through and for us. Really contemplate that. Life is always for us. What does that mean? It means that whoever we are, life gives it back to us. Life will never deny us anything that we become. However, it will not give us something we've not become. It doesn't do that. It mirrors back to us in perfect reflection who we are. And when we work with this idea, we work with it and know that we have the power and our job is to create the mental image. The mental image with the feelings behind it. We align that and we talk about it. We laugh about it. We speak about it. We act as if. And life works through us to create because the creative power is right there within us. Here's the other thing. Don't worry about anyone else. They have it too. The interesting thing as we explore this creative power is that this creative mind that responds to the nature of our thought is the same creative mind that creates and governs everything. You see, it has to be that. What I believe is that there is an infinite. I believe the infinite is all energy and all consciousness and you cannot separate them. I believe that it created everything out of it. And everything is an expression of it. And it is in everything. Therefore, you and I being created out of it are it. And the same power that it has, we have available to us to the degree that we understand it and use it. The wisdom of it is the wisdom we have available to us to the degree that we understand and use it. It's really critical to just understand that. And when you understand that, you realize you don't have a little power responding to you. You have a great power. You have the infinite power that created everything right where you are. And guess what? 
Its desire is to give you everything that you can believe. One of the most powerful things that we can do to transmit our lives is to take any negative or limiting ideas and begin to reestablish our conviction and faith in the unity and goodness of life. Here's what we've got to do. We go into meditation. We let go of all our negative thoughts and we tap into the consciousness of oneness where we lose discernment, where we see that we are one. We feel a sense of oneness. And that's a hard thing to describe. What does it feel like? Because it feels like nothing. Because in oneness, there is no contrast. And the second we get into oneness, all pain disappears. Because pain and suffering are the perceptions of the mind that is being fed by the senses that is being influenced by the habits of thinking that we have bought into. Yeah, we bought into, we've been domesticated. The greatest gift, as I said at the beginning, is that when we discover that we can think for ourselves, but too many people have forgotten they have the ability to think. We blindly accept what others say instead of discerning what is right for us. The thing that we come back to over and over and over again as we teach at Agape is life gives us who we are and nothing else. Our job is to become who we truly want to be so life can work through us and give us who we are.